morning, it's our privilege to have Reverend Paul Davis to preach to us. Reverend Paul Davis, uh, for me, is like missionary, very mission-minded uh, priest from Bigford, UK. Despite of his duty as a parish priest, he goes around to uh, even re-evangelize uh, in his uh, parish. And he has been a missionary to Qatar for four years and other places. So this morning, it's our privilege to have Reverend Paul Davis to preach to us. And the heavens and earth, the, the way things are, will, will go, be destroyed. Will be destroyed. And God's kingdom will uh, reign uh, forever. So it's a time of uh, deep thinking. And then towards the end of uh, Advent, the focus then begins to, to switch more to the joy of the coming of God, the coming of the Christ child. So you can put it like this. Uh, one of the things I enjoy eating uh, is sweet and sour. Huh? Something that's sweet and sour. So there's something about sweet and sourness in this time of uh, Advent. There's the soundness, as it were, of realizing that God's judgment comes into the world and how we need to be prepared to meet our God. And then there's also the sweetness that comes when we think about God coming into the world as a child to tell us um, how much uh, we loved. And when we think about the end of the world and the coming of the new age, we can see in the gospel today uh, um, 
a kind of tension, a kind of paradox, which was being lived out in the life of the uh, early church, and we need to live that out ourselves today. Because when you examine that gospel reading, which is uh, talking about the end of the world, a little apocrypha, you find it in some of the other gospels as well. On the one hand, it talks about the way in which we are able to see the coming of the end of the world and the coming of the day of the Lord, or, or as it says, uh, the coming of Christ on, in, in glory. When it talks about the fig tree, noticing the signs of the times. But then it, it, when you read the gospel closely and, and follow it down, it also speaks about, Jesus speaks about, you'll never know. You'll never know the actual time or the day when it will happen. you never know. No one, not even the angels know when that will happen. So that on the one hand, it's giving the idea that you can tell the signs of the times when it's going to happen. And on the other hand, it's saying you don't know. Tension paradox. And then Jesus says, you need to be ready. You need to be awake. You need to be ready uh, to meet your God. This tension. And um, through the ages of the, of the church, this tension has played it out. Sometimes people have thought the world's going to come to an end tomorrow. They see the signs in the world, the wars, the earthquakes, and it's going to be today, tomorrow. But it hasn't, hasn't happened. They forget the, what Jesus says. You do not know the actual time. And the, the way in which we need to live with this is that we need to be ready. We need to be ready and living out the gospel as, as God calls us uh, to do. And in the, it's in the context of this gospel reading that Jesus says, Everything will pass away. Everything will go as we understand it. Heaven and earth, when he talks about heaven and earth, he's talking about literally the sky, the universe, the planet. It will all go. It will all be gone. Because the new age is coming. The age of the kingdom of God. And we can see signs of it now. But when that happens, when that happens, my word will remain. My word will remain. And it's this uh, understanding of my word will remain that I want to focus on today and to speak about God's word to us as revelation. Revelation is when God reveals to us truth, when God reveals to us um, how we are to be and how we are to live. When we uh, read the pages of Scripture, God sometimes, and if not always, reveals something to us that speaks to us all as the whole people of God. So, for example, in the New Testament, towards the end of the gospel, Jesus says, I will be with you to the end of the age. That's a revelation that God is going to be with us to the end of this age. And we will walk with him in the new age to come. God will be with us always to the end of the age. This is revelation. This is truth. Or again, in the book of Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, uh, God says, I have plans for you, plans for welfare. It says in the book of Jeremiah, if you call to me, I will come to you. I will listen to you. This is revelation. God is speaking to us, his word. Now, when we speak about God's word to us as revelation, there is another way to, to talk and to understand it. There is a way in which God reveals revelation to us as individuals, as, as people. In other words, God speaks to us. God gives his word to us as, as individuals. So let me give you um, some examples of what I'm talking about today and how it happens. So for example, you could be reading in the scripture, maybe you're at home, you're reading the scripture, and suddenly you have um, an experience of uh, understanding. You read the, the words and suddenly the words come alive. Suddenly you have an experience that God 
is revealing something to you that you've never seen before. It's as though you and God are, in the, are the only people in the room together, and God is speaking to you. Speaking to your situation, speaking to your heart. That is revelation. God's word to you. It's, it's to you. So, for example, uh, if you, you might be reading the, the book of uh, uh, Joshua. And three times in the first chapter of Joshua, God uh, says to Joshua, Be determined. Have courage. Do not be afraid. So you might be reading that, that, that text and it's God speaking to you, telling you, revealing to you his word. Don't be afraid. Be determined. Have courage. It's God's word to you. Or again, another example would be, maybe you would come to church like this on a, on a Sunday morning and um, you're singing a hymn and you just have a sense that something in the words Something in the experience of singing, God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you about the difficulties of your life. Speaking to you about um, how you are to live your life. He's revealing himself. It's revelation to you personally as you sing the hymns. Or again. You might be by yourself at home, maybe out somewhere. Maybe you'll be praying by yourself. Or maybe you might be in a group of people praying together. It's just a normal experience like you normally have, and God, you know God's there with you. But suddenly, as you pray by yourself or with others, you have this sense that God is speaking to you. It might be just one word. It might be a reference to the scripture. God's word is given to you. And when that word is given to you, it's revelation. It's revealing something to you that you haven't understood or seen before. And when God's word is revealed to us as revelation, it's a gift. It's a grace. And it's important. It needs to be cherished in our hearts. As the weeks go on, as we approach Christmas, we will hear about the uh, Annunciation of the Angel to Mary. It's a beautiful um, little verse towards the end of that story. And it says, um, Mary treasured all these things in her heart. In other words, she treasured the word of God in the angel, in her heart, because it was God speaking to her. And this word of God, this revelation to us is so important because it will last forever. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my word remains. My word remains. This word of Jesus in the context of talking about the world that is coming to end where there will be lots of pain and, and difficulties of beyond our imagination teaches us also something very important. God's revelation to us, God's word to us personally. For instance, like I said about in, in Joshua, about having courage and being determined, it's important for us to cherish that and hold that in our heart because often in our life, life is difficult. We face many challenges. We feel, face many sorrows. And sorrows and tragedies in the world and in our families. And when that happens... We need to return to the word that God has given to us. That word that God has given to us that we cherish in our hearts. So we, when God speaks to us in revelation, as he does, we need to cherish it in our hearts and we need to remember it. So for some people, to make sure that they hold it always, they will underline Maybe some words in the scripture, in the Bible, in their, their Bible. Maybe they might write it down in the Bible what God has spoken to them. Some people almost have a, a journal. Some people, and let me give you myself as an example. So a few years ago, I had a very strong revelation from God about my life and how I need to live my life. And I went to someone who I trusted very much. And I told them what God had revealed to me in his word, his word to me. 
and asked him to cherish that for me, to hold it, because I knew that things were not always going to be easy, that, and I needed someone to remind me what God's word was to me. God's word to us is like that pearl where we, of great value. And when we come in the new age that is to come and we stand and kneel before the throne of God with all the cherubims and the seraphims, all the angels and the martyrs, God will remind us of the word that he has given to us in revelation to each of us. And God will ask of us, how have you remembered that word? How have you lived by my word? You might ask sometimes, but how can I really know that this is revelation and it's going to last forever? Well, St. Paul helps us in this. Because St. Paul, in the first letter of Corinthians, chapter 13, says three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. Everything else will pass. Everything else is secondary. But these three things will remain. Faith, hope, and love. And when God reveals his word to us personally, you can experience and see these three things. Faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love in God's revelation to you uh, it's, a, it's an indication, it's a confirmation that it's God's word to you. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will last forever. And remember again the story, the parable that Jesus says. He says, the person, the man, the person, the woman, who hears my word and puts it into action, is the person who builds their house on rock, the rock of, of my word. So I say to you again to finish today, as we begin this new year, this season of Advent, these weeks we need to hear God's word to us. We need to reflect upon our life. We need to be ready to meet our God today. And the most important thing that enables us to do that is to note, to hold, and to cherish in our hearts God's word to us as revelation. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word to you will remain forever. Amen.